Hi, this is Joe Chambers. Welcome to Musicians Hall of Fame Backstage, the Vault Series. Today's show is one of three clips that we did from an interview with the great, great Harold Bradley. Uh, Harold and his brother Owen founded pretty much Music Row. In this clip, Harold talks about the uh, session musicians that he performed with. He, he was one of the Nashville A-Team session musicians that played on so many hits and kind of created the Nashville sound. He talks about each individual player and his thoughts on those on those players, as well as the pre-players, the pioneer players uh, who were here before the Nashville A-Team actually was put together in the very, very early ages of the recording business here in Nashville. Hope you like it. If you do, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. Once again, late, great Harold Bradley. Would you mind just, you know, starting with whoever you want to start with and just kind of run down that list and and just tell just a little bit, whatever you feel like about each one of them? In uh, deference to the ones who have gone on, I'm going to try to do the those guys. I can't do them all first. But I do Tommy Jackson was a great uh, fiddle player. He was from Nashville. Uh, I think if you talk to Ray Edenton uh, and any of the other guys, you'd agree that we never heard Tommy hit a sour note. He was a really a, a fine player. He played on a lot of the Ray Price stuff, you know, and he tuned the fiddle down to an open string or whatever. He get a, kind of a drop string sound. Uh, he was just excellent, excellent fiddle player. Another uh, one on the A-team was Pete Drake, steel player. And I remember when we had 12 steel guitars uh, lined up and uh, they did a tribute to, to uh, Pete that Owen stood up and said, uh, which was unusual for Owen to stand up and speak anywhere. But he said, you know, the, uh, people always tell me about this guitar player or that steel player, or this bass player or something. He said, you know, Pete's the one guy that when somebody told me about him that uh, when I heard him play, I wasn't disappointed. Mm -hmm. He always plays the right stuff. Right, he always says the knows exactly what to play. And then uh, you have my buddy Hank Garland. I met him when he was about 14, and he played. He was fast, but he was rough. And uh, then they found out he was underage, and he had to go back, you know, <laughs> and uh, live another two years before he came back. He was a natural jazz guitar player, but he's a country guitar player and a commercial guitar player. If you go to listen to Eddie Arnold's records and. He, he borrowed my guitar and played that on Little Sister with Elvis, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, my Fender uh, Jazz Master. But uh, nobody's come along to take Hank's place uh, in Nashville or maybe in the world as a jazz guitar player and his dear friend. And I miss him since 1961 when he was, uh, he had some brain damage in an automobile wreck. Uh, Bob Moore. Uh, he has to be the best player or ever, bass player I ever worked with, and I worked with a lot of them. There were guys that could play faster, play higher, read better, but uh, he had the beautiful time, he had beautiful intonation, he had beautiful taste. And uh, after we uh, finally got acquainted in the Tic Tac and him having to go together, well, we worked together successfully all these years. and. Uh, was a great bass player. Uh, Buddy Harmon, the best drummer I ever worked with, and I've worked with all of them. All of them bring something to the table. But Buddy could play everything. He was the most underrated drummer because he was very laid back. But uh, he plays the country shuffle better than anybody in the world. Uh, Vince Gill calls him the uh, shuffle king because of the way he plays the country shuffle. And people forget that when we were doing the country records, they wouldn't let him play anything, not the toms and even the bass drum, instead of having a pop, they had a whoom when he hit it. You, know, you don't even notice it, and it didn't get in my way because of him doing it. As a drummer, you could also call him a musician. He, he played vibe some, he played piano for fun, but uh, he, he tuned his snares, he, he, it was always, it was musical. And when he touched it, it was musical. Uh, Floyd Kramer, amazing. 
I would sit behind him as close as I am to you when we were making all the records with Patsy, and I never heard a note he played. He played so soft and with such a great touch. And he never, he never did play rhythm with us. He played like comp chords in the middle or something, he'd reach up real high and fail. And uh, the only time I knew he was playing is when they would uh, play back the record and say, wow, was he doing that? And I didn't hear it, you know? But he was. Very tasty, and uh, of course, uh, we were blessed to have him until he got a hit record, and then <clears throat> we had other piano players come in. Another uh, piano player on the A-team is uh, Hargus Pig Robbins. And he's different unto himself in that he is a very commercial player. He plays wonderful rhythm, fills up the mid-range. Also, uh, he and Bob and I were doing a session when he first was uh, starting to work with us, and uh, Bob and I were making up a bass line, we were doing this or that, and, and Pig said, hey, Bob, what are you doing there? And Bob said, what's it to you? He said, because I'm going to play it with you. And Bob said, oh. So then uh, we added the left hand and the bass guitar and the bass uh, to the mix, you know, and uh, we all started trying to work together. Uh, let's see, who does that leave? Oh, it leaves, uh, Charlie McCoy came up, and Jim Denny heard him and thought he was really good. He took him over to my brother Owen and said, I want you to listen to this kid. So Charlie walks in uh, with a uh, real loud guitar and a little small amp, and he blessed uh, my brother away in his small little office playing Johnny Be Good. He's just fresh up from uh, Florida. And he got through, and uh, Owen turned to uh, Jim Denny and said, Hey, I know this kid's good, but I don't know what to do with him. So uh, Charlie uh, came and, and uh, watched the session, and then he went back down to Miami for two years, and then we came back. Then he became not only the greatest harmonica player that I've ever worked with, but he became a utility man. He played vibes, he played piano, he played trumpet, he played saxophone, he would just play electric bass, anything uh, to get on the records, you know, and he, w he would always do something that was tasty and uh, with a great attitude. He was always a hard worker. Uh, then uh, Boots Randolph, fantastic, wonderful commercial sax player. Uh, he was working in Evansville for a guy in a club who bought him a house. And uh, we tried to get Boots to move down here. He said, no, he, w he couldn't because he wanted to honor that commitment to the guy. We'd work sessions, and he had a little red Volkswagen. And I'd say, well, come on, you know, spend the night at my house. And he'd say, well, no, uh, but I'll come out there. So he'd come out, and I had an extra bedroom. He'd sleep three or four hours, and then he'd get up and drive back. I never saw him for breakfast the next morning. You know, he'd drive back to Evansville, but he, he, he would come and sleep at my house on. Ray Eddington. And when Hank Garland got hurt, my brother said, who do y'all want to take his place? And we all voted for Ray Eddington. And Ray dived in there and became the greatest rhythm guitar player in the world to us. Never had to worry about Ray. He, I mean, he was, time was so good. And he always figured out a way to play whatever it was. If he didn't know it, he, he would come up with it. Uh, let's see. Um, who am I, 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 I'm trying to get to one guy in particular at the very last, uh, and I guess I'm down to him, Grady Martin. Grady was the most commercial guitar player I've ever known in my life. We consider him uh, the leader of the uh, A-team because he was just great and he was the leader on so many sessions that uh, were big hits and great ideas that uh, and you just you really just can't leave this guy out. Uh, I think I've covered them all there. If, if that's if that's would, 11 uh, guys. Would Lightning be in there at all? No, he was an early pioneer. There's a list of pioneers, uh, guys. Uh, yeah, uh, Ernie Newton on bass, uh, Ferris Corsi on drums, uh, Jack Shook on rhythm guitar, uh, Grady was there, I was there. Uh, Bob Foster, uh, Floyd Robinson, uh, Jerry Bird, uh, Chet, uh, Lightning definitely would be one of the pioneer musicians. Uh, I guess Jimmy Self, rhythm guitar. Uh, 
Eddie Hill did some records on rhythm guitar. Vaden, Tommy Vaden. And then you got Don Helms. Played on a lot of stuff down there. You know, played with Hank Williams. But uh, he played on a lot of other people's like uh, Patsy Cline's Walking After Midnight. Mm -hmm. Well, they were, and also you got to remember the Anita Kerr singers ought to be in there. But somebody asked Chet about a year before he died. or They said, well, you know, you're rich and famous. Why are you still doing this? He said, I'm still trying to get it right. <laughs>